If you have questions, day-to-day -day questions, as I know you do <clears throat> even now and will continue to, know that you can call on me to answer them. You don't need the form of a book or anything else. This is not the only way I speak to you. Listen to me in the truth of your soul. Listen to me in the feelings of your heart. Listen to me in the quiet of your mind. Hear me everywhere. Whenever you have a question, simply know that I have answered it already. Then open your eyes to your world. My response could be in an article already published. It could be in the sermon already written and about to be delivered, Doug. It could be in the movie being made, in the song just yesterday composed, in the words about to be said by a loved one, or in the heart of a new friend about to be made. My truth is in the whisper of the wind. It might be my whisper. <laughs> My truth is in the whisper of the wind, the babble of a brook, or the crack of thunder. It's in the tap of the rain. It's in the feel of the earth.
Will you go within with me now for a moment? Mother, Father, God, even before we start the service, we want to come to you in Christ nature. May this service touch someone's heart. May it change a mind. May it uplift a spirit. May it support someone with your word and the music. And it is so. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Today's our Bible verse is having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. This is from Romans 12, 6. And I brought this verse, reminded me of several weeks ago when we were here and we had the Saturday night coffee house and I was so reminded that all the gifts and the people that are so talented here at this church. And it made me think of people that, that can write so beautifully and have pour their hearts out in their writings and have others sitting on the edge of their seat waiting to hear it. And how some of you can sing and with wonderful voices, which I can't. And some of you can play guitar and some of you can play the piano. And some of you just know how to greet people when they come into this house. And you make everyone feel so much better. Some of you are good with numbers. Some of you are good with teaching children. Each of you, each of you have a special, special gift. And thank you for sharing it with all of us. We recite in the orders of service after me our statement of being... God is all, both invisible and visible, one presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all, this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God, and I am one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. First song I'm going to do. Um, I saw, uh, well, I found several different um, renditions of this song, and I, I picked the easy one that I can do. <laughs> so. <laughs> I hope you like it. <clears throat> I'm not used to 
listening I'm curious and wondering Did I really hear your voice? You know There's more to living life than what I see And you know I find it in the quiet and Now's the time in our service for our healing meditations. It's always one of my special times. <coughs> I invite you to take a deep breath. Let the week go by, relax, and release for just a few moments. This is God's time, your time with God. We just heard that beautiful song, Be Still and Know. And some of the lyrics were, If you made me and you know me, are you wanting to show me? Yes, my friends, God made us. He wants to know us with his personal relationship. And he does show us the way each and every day. Be still and know. In my hand, I hold someone's prayerful thought, worry, or concern. And I just want you to put yours aside for just a few moments and let's concentrate on God. That we can be still. <coughs> he does know who we are. For the next seconds, I ask that you be still and just feel the love of God in your life. Feel this omnipresence in this church. As we are silent now.
the lyric in the song we just heard was, I'll find it in the quiet and believe. We've rested in God. We've turned our cares and concerns over to Him. We have been able to be still and know that His presence is among us. It is in Christ's nature I pray, and it is so. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I will share a little story with you. We're going to go to India, the country India. And as you know, in India there is a caste system. And they still practice that. But this is some years back, some years back, so we'll go back a few years. And there was a, a lady, and one of her jobs was to go get water for the household in the morning. And she carried it. She had one of those poles that she carried on her back with a pot over here and a pot on this side. And she would go down to the well in the morning and, and get the water for the household. The pot on the left was perfect. The pot on the right had that little crack in it. And as she'd go back to the house, she would lose some of the water. Well, one day she had a friend, and her friend came to her and met her at the well and said, I notice you, you have a crack in that right-hand pot that you have. It would make your job so much easier if, if you would go ahead and get a new one. And she said, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. Follow me. Follow me. So she got her water, and she went up the path and followed her. And as they were going up the path, she looked to the right-hand side where this pot would drip, drip, drip. And there were wild flowers growing all along the side of the path up to the household. And she said, you see, this pot enables me to to grow these wild flowers, and I get to cut them, not every day, but some days, and it makes the house much more lively, much more bright, much more attractive. I want to talk to us today, just briefly, about what we might perceive as imperfections, like that perceived imperfection in the pot, but really wasn't. Webster defines an imperfection as a blemish or defect. I'll take you back to 1874. Everyone likes to go back in the years to 1874. Winston Churchill was born. His life was from 1874 to 1965. And we all know who Winston Churchill was, the great United Kingdom Prime Minister. And he was Prime Minister from 1940 through 1945, and then again through 1951 through 1955. He was a great speaker, a great orator. And he was also an amateur historian. In 1953, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, not for one singular work, but for his body of works. In 1963, he was the first of eight to have ever been awarded an honorary United States citizenship. After his death, he died in 1965. After his death in 2002, Great Britain nominated him for the greatest man ever. The greatest Great Britain ever. Well, I made reference as to, as to how he was such a great speaker and great orator. In 1940, he gave one of his famous speeches, it's, I think it's called, The Finest Hour. And in that speech, he had that phrase where he said, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. And also in 1940, as the German Empire had progressed across Europe and Poland had fallen, France had fallen, Great Britain was standing in the way from the German, the German Luftwaffe, their, their air force was 
doing a bombing campaign on Great Britain. And this was before the, what's called the Battle of Great Britain in 1940, where Winston Churchill spoke to his people over the radio and said, this is one of his famous speeches, he said, we will fight in France, we will fight on the oceans, we will fight on the seas, we will fight in the lands, on the hills, we will fight on the beaches, we will fight on the landings. We will never, ever surrender. Well, that gave his people hope until the United States could enter the war on December 7th, 1941. That gave his people hope. He carried the people on his back. What you don't know, <coughs> he was born, as I said, in 1874. When he was six years old, he started school, and he was described as a stocky little red-headed kid. He did pretty well in school in the first couple of years. He scored very high in math, went to Ascot and Harrods private schools. But then he just, schoolwork went his thing, and he sort of, he never did make the first class, he made second class, just sort of a C student. But what you don't know about him, oh, he also was born to the Spencer family, so he came from a wealthy family. What you don't know about him is he was born with a lateral lisp. And in the, the 20s and 30s, before the advent and the popularity of radio, when journalists would go interview him, he was a stutterer also. And they would say, oh, he stutters so agonizingly, it's hard to watch him. It's hard to watch this man talk. He stutters and he has a lisp so bad. Well, he got fitted with special dentures for his lisp. And he practiced on his speaking. He would slow his speech down so he could think in between. And we grew over his speeches over and over and over until just by self-will, he conquered it. And later he was able to write, I have conquered my impediment. So when we look back on this man and say, well, he had a perceived imperfection. I don't know. Let, we're going to leave him right there. Let's go on somewhere else. We'll, we'll come back to that. In John 4, there's a great story about the woman at the well. She's at Jacob's well. This is when Jesus is leaving Judea, going to Galilee, and he's taking a shortcut through Samaria. And he's, he's nearing a town called Sychar. And at that town, there was a well outside the, the town. It's called Judea, uh, Jacob's well. And Jesus is there, he's thirsty, and the disciples had gone on ahead to get food. And a woman comes up during the heat of the day to get water. And Jesus speaks to her, and it shocks her because Jews don't speak to Samaritans, which that's what she was. I mean, you don't speak to a woman anyway. It was the heat of the day. And Jesus said, you know, may I have a glass of water, a drink of water. And she said, well, you didn't bring anything to get water with. And he said, if you knew all of God's gifts and who I was, you would ask for living water. Well, this intrigued her. She said, well, I want some of that living water. And she said, well, go get your husband. And she turned and then she said, well, I, d I don't have a husband. And he said, yeah, I know you don't. You've had five husbands, and you're living with someone now. Well, that shocked her. And she said, you must be a prophet. And he said, no, I'm the Messiah, I'm Jesus. And she believed him right off. And she left her pot, she left her water, and she went into the town, and she told everyone that Jesus, the Messiah, was out here at, the, at Jacob's well. Well, they all believed her, and they came out. And they, they begged for Jesus to stay and minister to him, And he did that for two days. And he stayed, and he taught them, and <coughs> preached to them. And, you know, 
we don't know her name in, in King James Bible. We don't, we don't even have a name for her. But I do notice that in Eastern Orthodox religion, they've given her the name Phoniti. As a matter of fact, they've even made, named her a saint because they say she's likened unto the apostles in that she brought so many to Jesus. Well, we could look at this lady and say, this woman, and say, well, now she had certainly had some imperfection, a perceived imperfection, didn't she? I mean, even by today's standards, five husbands. <clears throat> well, that's not really how it worked out, is it? She brought so many to Jesus, but let's let's just leave that alone too. We'll come back to that one also. I, uh, I was thinking of another illustration for perceived imperfection. And it made me remember back to June 26, 1963. The Soviet Union had built a wall in Germany to divide East Germany from West Germany. And our young president, John F. Kennedy, was going to visit the West Germans to, to let them know that America is behind you. We're here. We're on your side. And he had practiced his German. It was going to be Ich bin Berliner. Ich bin Berliner. I'm a Berliner. I stand with you. I stand with you. The U.S. is behind you. Well, you know, with this thick Massachusetts dialect, they still understood him. And he said, Ich bin ein Berliner. Ich bin ein Berliner. Well, that changed the whole translation. That changed it to, I am a jelly donut. <laughs> no, it really changed it to, I am a jelly donut. <laughs> Well, the people did sort of look at him, and they, uh, there was a few smirks and a few smiles, but they knew why he was there. They knew that this man came with a Camelot heart. He came representing the United States, and we were behind the West German people. So, I don't know. Is that an imperfection? Is that a perceived imperfection? Well, it really didn't turn out that way. They knew we were behind them. <clears throat> they knew we were there. Let me, uh, let me point out another illustration. <coughs> this is an actual transmission between a United States Navy ship and the Canadian <coughs> authorities off the coast of Newfoundland in 1995. I'll, I'll read it to you, but it's, it's interesting because these are the Americans. Please divert your course 15 degrees north to avoid a collision. Canadians recommend you divert your course 15 degrees south to avoid a collision. Americans, this is the captain, U.S. Navy ship. I say divert your course 15 degrees north. Canadians. No, I say again, to avert your course 15 degrees south. Americans. This is the aircraft carrier USS Lincoln, second largest ship in the US Atlantic Fleet. We are accompanied by three destroyers, three cruisers, and a numerous supply ships. I say again, to avert your course. 15 degrees north for every measure we've taken to protect this ship. Canadians, well, this is a lighthouse. Your call. <laughs> is that a perceived imperfection? <laughs> Are we being a bit blustery? Well, I'm giving you these illustrations. We can look back on each of them, and we can say, well, that pot with the, with the leak, 
look at the flowers that came from it. It turned out all right. And certainly Winston Churchill, even with his lisp and his stuttering, he, he accomplished it, he defeated it, he even wrote it. My impediment is no more. And the woman at the well, I don't know about her character, but look how many she brought to Jesus. Look how good she, she did. Look how that turned out. And the West Germans, well, that was just fine also. That worked out just fine. You see, in a very humanistic way, we can look at all of this and say, well, it turned out okay. It turned out fine. How do we look at it a little deeper, just a little deeper in our divine science way? I was reading an article a couple weeks ago, and it had a wonderful passage in it, and it said, God speaks to us not through earthquakes or thunder, and not through oceans and stars, but through a personal relationship with Him. Speaks to us here. And then I also was looking at another article and it said, God mind is all, and this God mind is good and perfect. And it got me to thinking about are we not created in the image of God? And we have that perfect part within us. That's my kinship to you, and that's your kinship to others, is this perfect part, this image of God within us. I think what we're supposed to do is just get out of the way of this, just get out of the way of ourselves. We're being so blustery, so proud, just get out of the way of ourselves and let this part grow and evolve and unfold and be the beacon it should be to others. No, God does not speak to us through earthquakes and thunder. He speaks to us individually through this part within us. Thank you. Will you go with him? Father, thank you so much for reminding me and us of our personal relationship with you, with your omnipresence, but also for the gifts that so many in here have. <clears throat> thank you for this service. And it was so. Amen. next song um, it's kind of uh, well I'll, I'll preface it by saying the um, I um, practice with some Buddhists and they have this meditation <coughs> called loving kindness meditation you think of someone's name and you wish them well may you be happy may you be safe may you be healthy may you be at peace and I came across this song that I knew um, from a while back and and I thought this, this was just the perfect loving-kindness meditation, so I, I'm sending this from my heart to you all.
join us next door for, we're not having a birthday cake today, we're having a birthday pie. <laughs> well, I understand that there was at least one person that likes lemon pie, so there's lemon pie for a birthday, so, and chocolate pie for those that like chocolate. But anyhow, we're having a birthday pie today instead of birthday cake. Do something different. So, uh, come next door and join us for that. Uh, also, May is Federation Month. Uh, we have um, little um, applications if you want to become a member or make a donation. I have some in the back of the room, so please <coughs> consider doing that. Um, we'll, we'll be announcing this the whole month of May. Also, please take your orders to service home if you like, because it does have on here what's happening at the church for the month of May. So we've got some, you know, uh, next Sunday is Mother's Day. We'll also have a potluck after church for Mother's Day. Um, and other things that are coming up for the month of May. So please take these home. We can print many more. So please take them home, put them in the refrigerator, whatever, so you know what's going on. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there will be no Monday night class this week. Uh, Nancy is not feeling well. Uh, she's got some things going on, so she will um, hopefully be back the next week. But uh, she needs to get some rest this week. So there will be no Monday night class this Monday night. And also, I want to let you know that Pam Cobbett is back in the hospital. She went back in um, Friday night. Is that right, Kathy? Friday night? Friday afternoon? Friday morning. Friday morning. So um, <coughs> she's doing better, but we need to keep her in prayer. She's the same problem for COPD. So uh, just please keep her in prayer, send her cards or whatever. So I wanted to let you know what's going on with that. Also, uh, I think that's uh, we announced a uh, potluck for next Sunday. Uh, this week's flowers are for Kate for your birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. All right. Our final hymn will be Deep Within. It's number 70, the single of verses. Deep Within, number 70, and the single of verses.